This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, a special agent with the state attorney general's office has some tips for kids and parents all about being safe on the internet. Hello and welcome to the latest and greatest edition of FYI on SSP TV. I'm Ken Cara and thanks as always for spending some time with us. Here's Wednesday's headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Pennsylvania Supreme Court Justice Coriel F. Stevens of Sugarloaf Township will officially run to the seat he was appointed to two years ago. Judge Stevens made the official announcement earlier this afternoon. The 68-year-old Stevens is the only member of the state's highest court from Northeast Pennsylvania. The local lawmaker has been in public office for more than three decades, having previously served as state representative, Luzerne County District Attorney, and on the Luzerne County Court of Common Pleas. FYI was at today's announcement, and we will have much more with Judge Coriel Stevens tomorrow on FYI. Cyber safety was the topic of a special program today at Holy Family Academy in Hazleton. As part of Catholic Schools Week, Special Agent Janine Holter of the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office talked to students about how to stay safe in today's age of technology. She says that students are using the internet more and more, and her office tries to ensure that kids use it safely, securely, and respectfully. She explained bullying and cyberbullying and stressed the dangers of online predators. She also encouraged parents to monitor what their children do online and on social media. In our office we have what's called our child predator unit. We have agents every day that work on the internet to secure our children's safety. We have adults out there 19 to 75 years of age who unfortunately are trying to gain information from our children. They do this simply by sitting in the comfort of their own home on the internet. They don't have to drive around the schoolyards anymore. They are using social media sites, internet gaming, internet chat rooms just to gain access to our children acting like they're their children's age, telling them the kind of movies that they like to watch, the music that they like to listen to, even to the type of clothing that they like to wear. And our children believe that they are talking to somebody their age, but they're actually talking to an adult that is trying to have an inappropriate relationship with them. Parents, we really want you to monitor what children are doing online. You can go to our website, attorneygeneral.gov, and get cyber safety tips for your students. We want you to monitor their phones, look at what they're doing every day on every social media site. Who are they talking to? Gain the passwords of your students and, and your children to see what they are doing on a regular basis. And also when they go to bed at night, take their technology away from them so we can secure that they get a good night's sleep. To learn more about cyberbullying and how to protect children online, you can go to www.attorneygeneral.gov. State police are looking for the person or persons who took close to $10,000 from a Hazel Township home. It happened sometime between last Wednesday around 10 a.m. and Sunday at 9.30 a.m. State police report that $9,700 all-in $100 bills was removed from an upstairs bedroom of the home of 1349 Hazelbrook Road in Hazel Township without the knowledge or approval of the victim. There was no forced entry and no other items were taken. Anyone with information on the incident is asked to contact state police at Hazel you can call 570-459-3890. It's no secret that it's cold outside, cold for man, and just as cold for man's best friend. While we humans do our best to keep ourselves and our families warm, we must also remember our four-legged friends as well. Chris Baranek, who joins us each Friday for our Adopt Me segment from the Hazleton Animal Shelter, has some important advice. Legally, all dog owners are required to make sure there's an adequate shelter as well as fresh water available for any animal that's uh, outside for any prolonged period of time. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that different breeds of dog uh, do better than others in the cold. For example, Samoyeds and Siberian Huskies may be able to stand lower temperatures for a bit longer than a boxer or something with shorter hair. Uh, so you want to take into account not only the basic needs of the animal, uh, which will keep it warm, and help it fight uh, cold weathers, which are shelter and water, but also you need to take into account uh, the breed of dog you have. That's Chris Barkanik from the Hazelton Animal Shelter. The best advice is to bring your pets inside during this cold weather to ensure their safety. 
When I first started dating my now wife, I sold my PlayStation 2 to give me some extra cash for her Christmas gift. Her birthday is coming up, and even though I love her, I also love my Xbox One. Luckily, there's some other options out there for some extra cash. There was a ribbon cutting at the Laurel Mall on Wednesday for Gold 2 cash. They will give you cash for gold, silver, platinum, broken jewelry, silver coins, and even gift cards from other stores and merchandise return cards. If you have some old jewelry, feel free to stop by. Well, I think they could come in, they bring their jewelry. The one nice thing is a lot of people don't know what their, their jewelry is worth. The second thing is a lot of people don't know even if they have true jewelry. Sometimes there's gold plated, there's silver plated. So they might throw things away and not realize that, hey, I might have some gold or silver. Good thing with gold to cash, we give you a free estimate. We'll check it out for you. We'll let you know if it's, if it's real gold or silver. Don't cost you anything. Just a few minutes of your time. Rocco Aruzzo and his wife Lisa worked for a similar business at the Laurel Mall, and when those owners decided to move out of the Laurel Mall, Aruzzo and his wife decided to open up a place of their own. Before we go to break, a quick reminder to check out our media partner, the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Pick up the Standard Speaker, an actual print edition, or you can go online to standardspeaker.com for local news, sports, and more. Well, coming up, Dave Seaman, the sports editor at The Standard Speaker, and myself will give you our Super Bowl picks so that you don't even have to watch the game on Sunday. Plus, we'll talk about the big Crestwood Hazelton area boys basketball game. Up next, a new foundation has been set up to help kids in the Hazelton area school district. We'll fill you in after this break. This is FYI News 13. Brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. All right. Well, the weather outside might not be too delightful, but we're back with Tamara, and she's talking about decorating and keeping yourself happy and bubbly throughout the winter season. Right. And the weather outside is frightful. That's what I'm calling this one. Mm. Um, but don't let your house look like it's frightful. Your home <laughs> like should... Like a haunted house. Yeah, that's one thing when I stage a home that's getting ready to be sold. Mm -hmm. The outside is so important. Yes. That's the only pla place people see. Mm -hmm. And some they'll pass there and they'll be they won't even be interested. So curbside appeal is crucial. Okay. And it's very important. Your home should look inviting. When you're driving, coming home from work, taking the kids, whatever you're doing, you don't want to pull up to your house and it's just like blah. I know mm -hmm. I live in the a wooded area. There's no color. Mm -hmm. It's just Blah, and it's depressing. So I have a couple pictures here. Spruce it up outside, add some color, pull in your driveway, and want to go in that house. All right. If it's not Let's inviting see. there, how inviting is it inside? So make it inviting. All right. Let's see. Okay. So here's some pictures, and it all starts with your doors. It all starts with painting your door. Paint your door. Oh, I like that. Just do it for the winter and change it back in the summer. But these are some pretty pretty colors um, to just add some life to the outside of your house. I love that. I love that too. That's more of a turquoise. There's a yellow and yellow. They say your door, front door is your personality, reflects your personality. So, I mean, I don't know if your husband's going to want you to paint the door pink, but I'm going um, home and paint my front door. <laughs> but decorate Change your door. Here's week, some ideas fellas. to decorate your door. Put a wreath on it. There's enough of nature things out there. Go you should put moss on your front door. You can I, grow moss on your front door tomorrow. Yeah, I should. You like I moss. should just grow a moss door. But no, there's some wreaths. Make it inviting. Make it, make it. I love summer. that. Yeah. So just, really, I didn't think about that. But if you paint your front door, like that's one thing I never, like I always, I'm afraid to. Everybody's afraid. I'm afraid. Why? But change the front door. Just I'm paint it and, and paint it back. It. It's going to be rainbow color. Yeah. When I get who cares? Home, right? If it's inviting, throw some just sparkle on that it. and just be done. What just, do you think? just make it. Yeah. Can I make sparkle? You, Can I put I glitter on there? I put glitter on there. You know me and my spray paint. Yeah. I'll moss my door. You glitter yours. Perfect. We'll have a contest. You said your personality. How about it? Oh, you're right. <laughs> so next week, what are we doing? Next week, we are going to talk about scent mm -hmm. and inspiring. Um, actually, in creating something, doing something, and just how scents and color and flowers and plants, they're going to be the last two segments. Good, good, good. So please keep it here on FYI each and every Wednesday.
Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Everyone say hello to Matthew Hunsinger. He's nine years old and he's pretty crafty. He built this igloo while visiting his aunt in Hazleton. I wonder if he has Wi-Fi in there. This winter isn't going anywhere, so we might as well enjoy it like Matthew. This is our local forecast from the National Weather Service tonight. Mostly clear. Our low will be around 12 degrees. The igloo should be fine. Thursday, a chance of snow mainly after 5 p.m. Our high will be near 26. New snow accumulation of less than a half inch is possible. Thursday night, snow mainly before 5 a.m. And again, accumulation of around an inch is possible for Thursday night. Friday, scattered snow showers. It will be a very blustery day. Our high on Friday will be 24. Friday night, blustery once again. Partly cloudy, low around 2. Saturday will be sunny with a high near 15. Saturday night, still cold low of four Sunday. We jump up to 25 degrees. There is a chance of snow Sunday night. Snow is likely low around 16. Well, did you eat dinner yet? Even if you did, why not stop by our weather sponsor, the Pines Eatery and Spirits in downtown Hazleton for a delicious sandwich and some chipotle with roasted tomato and onion soup. This Friday, LMN Duo will be at the Pines for your entertainment from 6 to 10 p.m. Check out the Pines and LMN Duo on Facebook. It's a first of its kind position for the Hazleton Area School District. As we reported, the Hazleton Area Board of Education recently hired a community relations director who will now oversee special fundraising and publicity campaigns for a brand new nonprofit arm of the district. That new arm is called the Hazleton Area Education Foundation. We had the chance to talk with District Superintendent Dr. Francis X. Antonelli and the district's new community relations director, Lainey Drobnock. The mission of the foundation is to enrich the greater Hazleton community through the development and growth of educational programs and initiatives. Uh, we have Lainey Drobnock, who will be the point person for the Education Foundation, joining us here in the Hazleton Area School District. Uh, we're really excited about Lainey. She has a wealth of experience in this field, and she will basically be uh, promoting uh, the uh, securing of funds to uh, enrich academic, cultural, and athletic opportunities for the students of the Hazleton Area School District. Well, the whole idea of the foundation um, and many other school districts have adopted this um, type of uh, funding or type of uh, foundation is really to get funding aside from taxpayer dollars. Um, we realize that the taxpayers can't do it all and there are many unmet educational needs that need to happen for our kids in this district to really better them. Um, and so we're going a little bit outside of the box and looking for things like um, corporate sponsorships or donations, um, looking at Co cooperation from the community uh, to really make some of these programs happen. Working with teachers, working with administrators to identify those unmet needs, um, and then really putting them to action once we have those funds and some really worthwhile projects look that we're looking at down the road. The Hazleton Area Education Foundation can now explore new funding options that include stadium naming rights and alumni gifts, which were not possible in the past. Speaking of new things, here's the new Pennsylvania Lottery games. New names, at least for some of them. And here we go with your midday winning lottery numbers. Pick 2, 8, 1. Pick 3, 2, 9, 5. Pick 4, 5, 7, 4, 8. Pick 5, 3, 0, 9, 2, 2. Will there be a pick 6 in the Super Bowl? I don't know, but I'll make my prediction next in sports. This is FYI News 13 Sports. There's a big, big game coming up this week, and Dave Seaman, the sports editor from the Standard Speaker, is here to talk all about it on Dave Day. And of course, Dave, I'm talking about Crestwood and Hazleton area. It's almost time for round two. Both of the teams really taking care of business up to this point, getting ready for that second meeting. Dave covers the Hazleton area Cougars for the Standard Speaker. Hazleton area lost in double overtime to Williamsport, Dave, but then bounced back. Just talk about what you've seen out of the Cougars recently. Well, they were able to bounce back. That was a tough loss where they were up by eight points with about three minutes to go in that game at Williamsport. Possible District 2, District 4 sub-regional playoff uh, preview. Um, they were able to bounce back against Dallas on, on Friday night. Uh, you tell they're a little bit tired early on. That's a, a long day on Thursday, a long trip to Williamsport, 
long game, don't get back till midnight, and to be able to bounce back uh, against an undermanned, I mean, a team they should beat is Dallas, but it's still for Coach Joseph, it was, a, it was nice to get a win, get everybody contributing in the offense. Uh, now you look forward to a, a, a big week coming up this week, and, and that's what they have in front of them. With the Cougars at home, I mean, Crestwood shot lights out in the first half. The first time around against Hazel Tenary, and Hazel Tenary had to stage a huge comeback. How key is maybe a, a good start in this game for Hazel Tenary at home with the crowd? Where, what are some keys, you think, against the Commons? Uh, I think you, you hit it right on the head there. I think uh, a good start. They have to uh, play the defense. They played in the second half of that game. Their, their defense was superb in the second half of that game. Uh, if I remember correctly, Crestwood only had uh, nine field goals other than Cole Wasco. Cole Wasco had a super game. He's a super player, experienced player for Crestwood. He had a great game uh, shooting the basketball. Then uh, Coach Joseph put Dante Biazzi on him, and Dante is getting quite a reputation for, for being a defensive stopper. I'm sure you'll see a lot more of that. And, uh, you know, let the crowd uh, – Build the energy in the in, in the arena, in the arena, the gym. <laughs> Make it sound like a big play. It will it will be a big time atmosphere. We are really building up this game, so get ready for that one on Friday night, and then of course Sunday it is the Super Bowl. The New England Patriots taking on the Seattle Seahawks. And first, Dave, on a scale from one to five, how much do you care about the Flake Gate? I think eight. I think it's a big story. It's a huge story. No, not really. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, all these press conferences, individual press conferences. First, you have Bill Belichick and Tom Brady as his press conference. The Patriots owner has a press conference. I think they need a press conference with the clubhouse attendant who's uh, rumored to be the, uh, the, the, the person involved with this. I, I don't think it's a big story as far as, as, far as the Super Bowl goes. And um, I like uh, Richard Sherman, who said it so eloquently. I don't think the Patriots will be uh, uh, penalized, and, and nor they should be. If nothing happened with the team, uh, it, it, it happened, it's over. Let's focus on the Super Bowl. I agree, Dave. And speaking of the Super Bowl, heading into it, I was Seattle all the way, and then the conference championships happened, and I saw some chinks maybe in Seattle's armor, and I, the Patriots just look so dominant against the Colts, and I'm going leaning toward New England, and you said the same thing. You have the Patriots this week. I, I do. I, I think it's the Patriots here. They've had a couple Super Bowls where they probably should have beaten the Giants. Luckily for the Patriots, they're not playing the Giants this year because the Giants seem to have their number in Super Bowls, albeit by close games. Uh, the Patriots have been on a mission since that loss at Kansas City early in the season uh, when everybody was questioning uh, whether Tom Brady was finished, whether Belichick might have lost a little bit of touch. Uh, I think they bounced back quite nicely. I think Seattle may be one of the best teams when they are clicking and not making any mistakes, but I think the Patriots maybe can force some mistakes this weekend, get them out of a rhythm, so we will see. Dave, we always appreciate you dropping by on Dave Day. We'll see you again hopefully next week. Talked about Hazel Tenary, the Cougar basketball team. Well, they took care of business against Wyoming Valley West on the road. And Crestwood, they did their part. They hosted Pitts Tenary on Tuesday, and they got the win. So the stage is now set for Friday night, the Huey McGeehan Gymnasium. Here's another reminder that you can buy tickets in advance of Friday's game between the Big H.A. and the Wood. If you're in the mountaintop area, you can buy tickets at Crestwood High School Thursday and Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. On Thursday, go to the main office, and on Friday, you can get them outside of the cafeteria. At the Hazelton Area High School, you can buy tickets on Wednesday night from 6 to 8 p.m. at the gym box office and on Thursday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the athletic office. Let's get back to the scoreboard now. In a showdown of Schuylkill League Division I powers, Pottsville, they beat Tamaqua for the second time this season. They moved to 18-0 overall. Tamaqua is 15-3 and 9-2 and and in the league. North Schuylkill, they got a tight win over Lee Heighton. Also in the Schuylkill League, Mono Area's win over Marion gives them a little more, a little bit more breathing room on the top of Division Three, thanks to Shenandoah Valley's loss to Minersville. In girls basketball, Hazelton area they beat Wyoming Valley West in the Wyoming Valley Conference, and Minersville topped Shenandoah Valley in a Schuylkill League crossover game. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One announcement for this evening. Luzerne County Community College Career Services will be hosting the annual Health Sciences Job Fair for students and alumni on Monday, February 2nd, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Francis S. and Mary Gill Carroza Health Sciences Center in Nanticoke. The job fair is for first- and second-year students and alumni. For more information, just call 1-800-377-5222, extension 7732. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Lucy Pantanzas, formerly of Hazleton, 
funeral is Saturday at noon in the St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Friends may call Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon at the church. Arrangements are by the John F. Heron Funeral Home. June L. Goldsworthy of Drums. Funeral is Friday at noon from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Michael Plaska Jr. of Freeland. Funeral is Friday at 9 a.m. from the McNulty Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. Alice T. Davidic of Hazel Township. Mass is Friday at 10 a.m. in the Transfiguration Roman Catholic Church. No public viewing is scheduled. The Hillary J. Bonin Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Marie T. Bednar, formerly of West Hazelton. Services are being held in Georgia. The Mays Ward Dobbins Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Richard R. Ford, Jr. of Hazelton. No services were announced. Robert J. Shellhammer, Jr. of Drums. Arrangements will be announced by the Harmon Funeral Home. Marta Santiago of Hazelton. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. And Miguel Colon Rodriguez of Hazelton. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. I'm the membership director for the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce. And I'm here today to tell you about a great deal that the Chamber of Commerce has to offer to, to prospective new members. We call it our New Year discount. Uh, the way it works is that new members get 16 months of membership for the price of 12. Uh, membership's already relatively inexpensive. Nonprofits, uh, for nonprofits, it's $175. For small businesses, most small businesses, it's $250. And for professionals like doctors and lawyers, it's $300. So if you figure it in, it's a great deal. Now, not only do you, do you receive the 16 months membership, but you get all the perks that every new member gets upon joining the chamber. We give you about $400 worth of free advertising in our local publications. You're listed on our website. We promote your business in our uh, monthly newsletter. And uh, we, we offer member-to-member -member discounts, which you and your employees can all take advantage of. And if you're a new business, just starting up, our chamber marketing department can arrange a ribbon cutting grand opening for you, free of charge. If that sounds good to you, as it does to me, call me at the chamber, 570-455-1509, and we'll get you all set up. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Daniel Beck of West Hazelton. Daniel, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. The Hazelton Area High School bowling teams are doing a very interesting fundraiser. We'll tell you all about it tomorrow. I can't wait. Until then, take it easy, everyone.